Hey everybody, it's Dan. Welcome to Weld Fever. Hey, I've been getting a lot of questions, a lot of comments and emails on MIG welding and specifically MIG welding troubleshooting. People have been having some problems laying down good welds, whether it be feeding problems or what have you. So on today's episode, that's what we're going to tackle, MIG welding troubleshooting. So stick with me. Here we go. Hey, just as a reminder, we're having a special for Weld Fever Wednesdays. And the special is on the Weld Fever cap and, of course, the stickers. Uh, the cap is going for $14.99 right now. You have to enter the promo code WEDNESDAY. WEDNESDAY is the promo code. Go to weldfever.com and click on the store. You'll get this for $14.99 and we'll throw in a sticker for you also. So make sure you support the show and we appreciate it. Okay, the first thing I'm going to talk about is primarily feeding trouble, and I think that's what we're going to be discussing for most of this video. Um, feeding trouble, getting the wire out of the spool and into and through the gun, is probably the one number one thing, the number one problem that people have when it comes to uh, MIG welding or flux core welding. And in fact, that's the majority of the problems I heard from from uh, viewers this last week. So the first thing we're going to start off with is the wire spool tensioner. Okay, you see here I have two machines, okay? Different, different manufacturers, but yet they're very similar in nature. And this is 11 pound spool, 11 pound spool, 11 or 12 pounds, depending upon how much you get. But these are the larger spools, and so I have these into the machine here. Now, the, what we're discussing, or what we're going to discuss, is the actual spool tensioner. And here, if you can notice on this particular model here, we have like a wing nut that's inside here. This is what ten gives tension to this spool here. And on this particular model, we have this regular nut with a spring, and that's what gets the tension on this spool here. Now you see, you notice also we have this device on this particular one here. This is actually to keep the uh, spool in place. You can tighten that down as much as you need to, although I wouldn't suggest you going crazy on it but you can tighten it down in order to make sure that that spool stays secure in there. It has nothing to do with tension on the spool itself. On this model, it just has kind of a hook in here which actually keeps this spool in, doesn't allow it to come out. That's pretty convenient as well. Okay, the number one question is, well, just how much tension do I need to put on this thing? In other words, you know, how, how rigid should it be? The answer is, just tight enough to keep the spool from unraveling itself. Now the spool of wire, the wire itself is rolled up on the spool and it's under a lot of tension. Uh, when you just allow it to go free, if you were to make that mistake, you're going to find out real quick that the, the entire spool of wire will unravel itself from it. And when that happens you might as well throw it away because it's really virtually impossible to put it back on the spool and have it feed correctly. It just won't work. It's, it's, a, it's a shame, but that's the way it is. So what you need to do here is make sure that this nut is just tight enough. Now watch what I'm going to do here on this particular nut over here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and loosen this and watch what happens when I get just a little too loose. Whoa, see that? See the movement? There it goes even more. This thing is already wanting to unspool itself, unravel itself. So I'm going to tighten this up just a couple of shots, just enough to keep it, and that's where I'm at. And that's the perfect tension on this spool. I have it just tight enough to keep it from unraveling itself. Okay, the uh, next thing on the list uh, in terms of the things that cause problems with feeding is the uh, drive roll tensioner. Now. Right here in this area is the drive roll assembly, and here is one of the drive rolls, and here is another one under here that you can't really see. And you're going to notice that right here, and let me take this apart as I pull this off. See, here's the other drive roll right on top here. Okay, this piece comes down, and it actually it uh, contacts the wire, and by kind of sandwiching the wire together, it allows it to advance it to feed it through. So, in order for this to happen, there has to be some tension on it. So the tension is created by pushing this drive roll down on top of the wire and then putting this piece in and then adjusting the tension of it so that it smashes down on the wire and then feeds it. Okay, so the big question is, well, how much is enough? Well, just like before with the uh, spool tensioner, the same thing applies here. 
only enough to do the job. I'm going to go ahead and fire up this welder and I'm going to show you a trick that'll show exactly how much is enough. Okay, so it's a little loud, so forgive me. I hope you can hear me okay. Now, the number one test to do here to make sure that you have the uh, actual drive roll tension set correctly is you take your wire and you take your nozzle and put it up against like wood, for example, and then you go ahead and you hit the trigger and look what's happening over here. It's kind of going, but it's kind of slipping. See that? It's slipping. That's telling me right off the bat I don't have nearly enough tension, so I'm going to give it a couple of turns here just to get it up to where I hope it should be. Then I'm going to clip my wire again, and I'm going to try this again. Here we go. Still slipping. Still slipping. So I'm going to go ahead and give it another couple of turns, and now let me try again. Ah, look at that. And you notice how the wire is curling back on itself. Everybody see that at home, I hope? Maybe just a little bit more tension. Look at that. Nice spirals curling back on itself. That right there is the number one test to show that you have the right tension. It's uh, putting a little pressure on wood. It's got to be something non-conductive so you don't arc up. And of course, something that's not touching the, uh, the ground. And when you hit it up against that wood and it has enough force to come around and, and roll around itself like that, you know you've got the perfect amount of tension for this application. Now, this particular tensioner has a little bit of some numbers, some indicators, so that makes life easier for me. I know now this is just above the three mark here. It's somewhere between, oh, I guess it's about two and a half-ish or so. So I can then take note of that and set that tension every time for this type of wire. But keep in mind, every type of wire is different. If you change the wire diameter, this tensioner's, this tension setting is probably going to change. If you go from this to flux core, that's probably going to change it too. So every time you put in new wire, and even maybe manufacturer to manufacturer, you should do this test and retention just to make sure you got it right. I think we'll end it there. Uh, we've got a ton of information on this already, uh, but I've got a lot more to go. So make sure you join me next Wednesday as I'll uh, continue along with this uh, discussion on uh, MIG welding troubleshooting. Anyhow, don't forget, right now we are knee-deep into our giveaway, our Longevity Stick Weld 140 giveaway. We're going to be taking uh, entries uh, for the giveaway until April the 15th, so make sure you log on to www.weldfever.com backslash giveaway to enter today. I thank you very much, and I look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday. Bye-bye.